Once you have your models pushed up to GitHub, uh, we'll want to set up some way to run them remotely. So the DBT team built a tool called Sinter, which is sinterdata.com, uh, which will run your DBT models in the cloud. It's basically like a hosted version of DBT. Um, so it's free for up to six runs a day, uh, which will probably be good for you. Basically what Sinter does is allows you to create what's called a project from your repo. Um, so we're just gonna take our repo URL here. You could just do this through the menu, but we have a lot of client repos that I don't wanna expose, so I'm just gonna type it in. Um, so we're gonna import the repo, and then it will create what's called a, a project. And once this loads up, um, you can create a job, what's called a job, which will run your models. So let's create a new job and we'll just call it overnight run. We'll run it on the latest version of dbt. Um, with default target, let's say four threads, make it faster. Um, and yeah, we'll just use the dbt run command. You could, you could you know, use fancy dbt stuff like specifying variables and all that good stuff that we didn't get into in the course. Um, but for the most part, we'll just use dbt run here. And we'll say run this job in a schedule every day. We'll get into scheduling in a bit. Um, but let's just say 8 a.m. UTC, which will be, you know, probably 2 a.m on the East Coast or something like that. And yeah, we'll just save this job. The other thing you need to do to get, um, so you can always click run now to run that job. Um, if we click run now, it'll, it'll fail because we don't have a target specified. Um, so I'm just gonna cancel that. But it, when it runs every night, it'll show up here um, with the logs and any errors uh, from the run so you can kind of debug what's going on. Um, so the other thing that you need to do is set up uh, and you can also set up notifications. So say send an email on success or on failure. And let's see, you can also, if you want to, um, do, do, do. got it. If you want to, you can also run, um, run this repo on a dev branch, any, any branch other than like the, the master, but we don't usually do that. Last thing that we're gonna do um, to configure the Sinter project is to tell it which connection, which, which uh, BigQuery database it, we want it to use. Um, so I'm just gonna crack open, I already had this open. This is the connection settings page. And you'll select BigQuery and then you'll basically go into, crack open your uh, Dot JSON file, which has all of your key information in your project ID, their private key ID, etc. Um, and you're going to copy these fields into Sinter. So project ID, ADP apprenticeship, you're going to name it something. Uh, your schema is agency data pipeline. And yeah, and then your private key ID and all this good stuff. The one tricky thing is your actual private key in this field. Uh, you're gonna have to replace all these new lines, these uh, back or forward slash, uh, forward slash N new line characters. Just delete those and actually tab uh, return a new line. So you'll end up with like a paragraph instead of, the, instead of everything on one line. Um, but yeah, all those other fields should be straightforward. When that's done, you save that, and then on the options page, you'll just select that under your connection. Um, and that's really it for Sinter. We'll come back to this when we're, um, we're talking about how to schedule everything to, so that your dependencies are in line. Um, but you'll find that Sinter is just amazing. Um, you know, it, it, first of all, models usually run faster on their servers than if you're just running them, running them locally, and it's much more reliable uh, if you're going to run models frequently, if you're going to run models every time, you know, for example, you uh, a, a pull request is submitted to GitHub or anything like that, you know, Sinter is just a great tool and free, mind you, for uh, automating most of that stuff.